running now. So, what questions do you all have? My only comment is this senior artist feel good. Oh, Chloe, nice. Okay. Um, all right. So, what questions do you have? Are we going to have a... Wait, I got two people going. Here. Oh, sorry, Gus Caitlin. Uh, I just wanted to know if we were going to have a reduction uh, potentials chart on the tech. So yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm making a copy of that. Um, I'm going to print it out tonight and then give it to you guys tomorrow. It's going to be a separate reference sheet. You're going to have it for the whole test. There's a couple questions where you're going to need to reference it to see, you know, which reaction is higher. Um, I think that, you know, if I, if I had planned better, I would have just selected the equations that apply to your questions because I think that's the way it's going to be on the AP Chem exam. So I'm sorry that I have to give you the whole thing. If it gets confusing during the test, I will be happy to give you guys some direction. I think that's, that's only fair since this isn't accurate to the actual AP Chem exam. Whereas I try to emulate it entirely, this is not. So if you guys are confused about it, please feel free to ask me. Okay. And follow-up question to that, um, how many equations from that packet are going to be on the equation sheet? There are just a couple, actually. Um, there's the Q equals I over T, like the charge. Or, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I forget. So coulombs equals amps times seconds. So it's I equals Q over T. Here, I'll, um, let me switch to a second. Bamboo paper. Uh, okay. So there is the I equals Q over T because that's, that's amps equals coulombs over like seconds. So coulombs equals, the way that I remember it is this way right here. So this one, so this is what you're getting. Let me change the ink on this one. This is what you're gonna actually get on the sheet. Okay. So you'll need to have that. Um, the other one that's on there is, um, The Nernst equation? No, no, that's a good question. We're not doing the Nernst equation. They're frustrating. They're frustrating me that they're not putting it up there, but they're gonna do this one, the delta G equals NFE. Is it negative? Um, yes, it is, thank you. <laughs> because that's the moles, which is usually like a two, a three, a four, something like that. Let's say it's two times Faraday's. So like 96,500 times the voltage, which if you guys remember on a voltaic cell, if it's going automatically, like it's, it's running like it's supposed to be, that's going to be a positive number, like 1.57, which corresponds to delta G being negative, which is why it has to be negative here. So if you have, a, you have an E, you have an E naught that's greater than zero, you have a delta G which is less than zero, it's a spontaneous equation, or spontaneous reaction, sorry, and the K is also greater than one. It's a product favorite, it wants to go to the products. Um, so that, all of that is wrapped up, like that, that, those are, those are, this is all right here, this is all for like galvanic vo voltaic cells that, that are going forward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And usually this K right here, it's not just bigger than one, it's like thousands of times greater than one. I mean, it's exponent. Sometimes you get a K that's like, I think I saw a problem recently, like K was equal to, you know, five times 10 to the 282nd. I mean, something ridiculous. Like they just really want to go forward. So, but that's important to remember. This right here, is important to remember for the test. <laughs> okay. All right. Marina, you've been very patient. What's your question? Um, I don't get the converting. Converting? Um, like, 
I don't, I don't know. I just don't know when. I don't know. I'm just confused on the. Um, is there a, is there a problem like it that we can reference? And I can. There's number seven thirteen. Let me just pick one. I don't know. Really okay. That's um. Oh, it's not open. Let's see. So this is the practice test. Let's start with, with seven. All right, and... Okay, can you guys see the practice test pretty well? Oh, yeah. I see. So seven, thirteen, yes, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay, I got it. So, Let's um, let's go through number seven because there will be a problem like that on the test. Let me uh, pull up the bamboo paper while we're doing this. Okay. Can you guys see the bamboo paper? Yes. Okay. All right. Number seven. Um. So as a steady current of 10 amps is passed through an aluminum production cell for 15 minutes, which of the following is the correct expression for calculating the number of grams of aluminum produced? One Faraday equals 96,500 coulombs. So if you, this is the way that I always remember it. You want to start with coulombs. You want to start with charge first. And I say that, you don't have to do that. Let me back up. How about just start with your given? Okay, and what are you given? Marina, what's the first thing that you're given? Um, amps. Amps, okay. So that's 10 amps, okay. And um, we're if we're getting, if you remember, coulombs is equal to amps times seconds. So I didn't want to write coulombs first because you're going to get to coulombs, but you need to start with amps times seconds. So how can you get seconds out of it? Um, convert 15 minutes to seconds. Good. So we get 10, we get 10 amps and then you multiply it times the 15 minutes. Okay. Right. And to get that to seconds for every one minute, oops, why that minute was ugly, is 60 <laughs> seconds. Okay. So the minutes cancel out and now we have amps times seconds. So now we've got coulombs. So now we need to convert through coulombs. So we get one coulomb, I'm just gonna put like that. Or no, I'm sorry, that's not what you write. Uh, sorry. Uh, you type, or you, this is where the 96,500 coulombs comes in. And, and pretty much whenever you're doing these conversions, that 96,500, when you're starting with amps, when you are starting with amps, the 96,500 is going to be on the bottom. Okay, you're going to start with amps and you're going to multiply times minutes and seconds and then coulombs, the, the, the 96,500 is going to be on the bottom. And that's equal to one Faraday, okay? And I'm kind of going long here on this, but that's okay because I can show you a little shortcut after that. And then we would say that for every one Faraday, that's one mole of electrons, okay? Now we're talking about aluminum. And what is the charge on aluminum always? Do you remember, Marina? Uh, three plus? Yes, good. So it's three moles of electrons for every one mole of aluminum. And then if we want to know the grams, we say one mole of aluminum, we look at a periodic table and I can tell you just by looking at the choices that I have, it's probably going to be 27. It's like 26.98, 27 grams of aluminum. Okay. So what you have is, if I write this out, you have 10 amps, you have 15 minutes, you have 60 seconds. Okay. Now the, the 96,500 coulombs right there, you could just do like this, 96,500 coulombs in, in one mole of electrons, okay? Okay. And then we have the three moles 
of electrons on bottom. We have the one mole of aluminum, one mole of aluminum up top here. I'm trying to squeeze this in. And then the one mole of aluminum gives us the 27 grams. So when I put all that together, I've got 10, I've got 15, I've got 60, and I've got 27 on the top. And on the bottom, I have 96,500, and I have the three. And if I look, that's C, and so that is right. Thank you. Okay, so, and let's, this is important, so let's go ahead and do 13 as well. Um, let me just look at 13, 13, 13, 13. Okay, so now we're starting with the Faradays. So actually, it's kind of, it kind of shortens it a little bit. Uh, all right, so number 13. And now we skipped over the amps, we've skipped over the minutes and seconds, we've gone straight to Faraday's, which means we're going to take the, and because the 96,500 and also the Faraday's, um, we can skip over the, it's not even going to be divided by 96,500. You have 0 0.5000 Faraday's, one Faraday is one mole of electrons, and we're talking about lead to nitrate. So that Roman numeral two tells us right away that it's PB2 plus, which means how many electrons are we gonna be transferring? Two. Two. Two moles of electrons on bottom to one mole of lead of the PB, and one mole of PB, oops, boy, this handwriting is off. Okay, is, um, somebody help me out, is it like, isn't it like 200 something? No. What is it? It might be. I mean, I'll, I'll get my practice table out. Lead is 207.2. Uh, whoops. Uh, okay. Is 207.2. So you can see looking at the choices, like A, they're trying to trick you because it's that's the exact mass of lead pretty much. So you look at it and you know that you basically have 0 0.500 is like another one half, right? So you're basically taking 207 and you're dividing it by four. And so the answer would be C, it would be 51. You're gonna have 207 divided by four is equal to about 50. So, and the answer that's closest to 50 is C. So that makes sense to you guys? Marina, makes yeah. sense to you too? Okay. Um, and then, was there another question, the free response like that? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It was, um, so it's the, the B, the B, um, no, the A, I'm sorry. Oh, this is totally messed up. There was one where there's a galvanic cell and then there was one that was an unknown metal M forms a soluble compound MNO32. Do you guys see that question? Do you want me to show it to you? I'll show it to you actually, because it'll probably be easier just to look at it versus me going through it on uh, the bamboo paper. All right, so you guys can see it here. And they said 2.50 amps is applied for 35 minutes and it was 3.06 grams of the metal M is deposited. Calculate the molar mass of M and identify the metal. So we know that looking at this right here, that to do reverse swap and drop, the NO3 is a one minus. We know that because that's a polyatomic ion we have to have memorized. So that means that this unknown metal M has to have a two plus because when you did swap and drop, it became its subscript two. So we started off with the amps again 2.5 amps, and um, it was times, it was 35 minutes, so it was times 60, time, or times 35, times 60 on top. We divided it by the 96,500, and then it doesn't show the part where you have to go through Faraday's, but basically then you have one Faraday, one Faraday on bottom, one mole of electrons. You have two moles of electrons for every one mole of the metal and that gave you the number of moles of the metal. Once you have grams and once you have moles, 
you can divide grams divided by moles to give you the molar mass. AP loves this. They love to push you. Like you have the mass, whatever it is, to find the moles. Chemistry is all about the moles. So if you can, if it gives you the grams and asks you for the molar mass, you need to know that you're trying to find the number of moles. Okay. All right. So that was another one of those questions. And did we have another one that slipped in? No, nope, that was those three. Okay. So a lot of these questions you're going to need to, let me see what I've got in the test. You're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be looking for um, starting with amps, running it through minutes to get seconds, dividing it by 96,500, multiplying it times the the molar the molar mass oh and dividing by the number of electrons that it transfers um, I have I have a question in the multiple choice I have a question in the multiple choice that is very similar to number seven and then I have a question in the free response that is uh, it's not really like that. What it is, is um, it's kind of a backwards one. It's going to give you some other pieces of information and you've got to, you've got to kind of go backwards. I, I don't want to totally give it away. I guess it's, I'm like, hey, on this question, do this. Um, just, just be prepared to be able to, to go backwards or forwards on that equate, on that, on those conversions. Okay. All right. Other questions? Um, just something that was kind of on my mind. You said that we weren't given the Nernst equation on the equation sheet, so the, are we going to have to memorize that? Or? Okay, so here's the deal. AP College Board has said students do not have to use the Nernst equation. Um, so you, you wouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to use it to um, to answer a question. Now, there are some questions where if you know the Nernst equation, if you are familiar with it, if you have it memorized, you can use it to justify your answer because there are some written questions that are saying, like, you don't have to actually do the calculation, but using the Nernst equation, you would show that if you had done that, that it could affect the E of the cell. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... College Board, AP, the AP test, they will accept an answer if you use the Nernst equation. They are not going to provide it, nor are they going to require that you use it to answer a question. On my test, you do not have to do any calculations with the Nernst equation. However, there is a question where justification, if you use the Nernst equation, it, you, you don't have to use the Nernst equation, but if you do use the Nernst equation, it's one way to justify your answer. Okay. It's it's about like you remember the um the stuff where we we precipitate out if you if you if you dumped in something that was if you remember the the different possibilities of of um what happens to your cell your electrochemical cell let me go back to the um, all right. Can you guys see the bamboo paper? Okay. On, by convention, most of the time, your um, anode is on the left and your cathode's on the right. And your salt bridge is right here. Okay, and then um, your electrodes are right here, and they connect with a wire up to your voltmeter. The electrons are flowing this way. Okay, and when they that means that this side it's plated, so the pluses are going on there, and then this side it's coming off. Okay, so um, the Nernst equation. E, oh, not E naught. It's just E of the cell.
e of the cell is equal to e naught minus um, haha -ha, I've forgotten the nurse equation <laughs> let me look it up really quick Oh, yeah. Would you please tell me? Um, e of the cell equals to E naught minus RT over NF That's times right. L and Q. Okay. All right. So obviously this is, you know, this is the key to the whole thing. Because Q is equal to the concentration of the products. Oops. Uh. So Q is equal to products over reactants. And usually what you have going on is let's use a, um, a copper and zinc example actually um, that, let's see, so in a copper and zinc I think the um, do I have that example? handy. It'd be better if I use something that you guys can see. Um, I apologize for making you guys wait on this. Oh, here we go. So um, I'm just going to share this other document with you. It'll be a lot easier. I'll go back and forth between the two. Um, okay. Do you see the, the cell right here? This is what I was trying to draw. And, um, and so your, your, your natural log of Q is going to be the products over the reactants. And in this situation, when you have zinc plus Cu2 plus going to zinc 2 plus plus copper, um, you're really just looking at the ions. The solids don't play any part in it. So it's the zinc 2 plus over the copper. So the question is, if you drop a precipitate into, let's say, the um, anode in the anode half cell, you drop it in the anode half cell. What happens to the voltage? And so you, you can look at it from a couple different ways. If you drop it into the anode, in the anode side, the anode, it's going to, um, and you precipitate out the zinc 2 plus, what happens to the amount of zinc 2 plus that you have? It decreases. Decreases. Let's just use Le Chatelier's before we use Nernst. If you use Le Chatelier's and you decrease the amount of product, which way will the reaction start going more? Like what will it do to get back to, or what, which way will it increase? Will, does, it, does it resist? Does it push back towards the reactants or does it move more towards the products? It would reverse towards the reactants. No, if you, if you take up zinc, there's less product, and so it wants to produce more oh. to get going that direction. It, ha it, it can do more going that direction. So if you, if you precipitate product, it's going to want to go more. It's like that teeter-totter. If you take away some product, that, that product side, the right side of the, of, the, of, the re of the equation goes up, and so it pushes forward. It, it favors the forward reaction. So if you do that, you're your voltage is going to be higher because now it's pushing more to, to produce more zinc 2 plus it's sending more electrons through to the cathode. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
if you're doing the Nernst equation, um, and you do, let me go back to that for a second. If you have a calculator handy, you can plug this in, assuming that, it, just ignore the, the RTNF, like that's gonna be a, a constant in the end anyhow. So you've got Q, and so you're, you're getting more product over reactant. So if you even just make the product higher, then the react is now it's favoring the product side, like it wants to go that way. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Um. Oh wait, no, no. Q Q is Q is the. Um, I'm sorry. The Q is what is the uh, the conditions that are not at equilibrium. So it's right. It's not. It wants to go to the product side, but it's not there yet, right? So if we decrease the amount of product because we precipitated it out, does that make sense? Oh. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. You decrease the amount of product because you precipitated it out, so you end up with a number that's less than one. If you do natural log of a number less than one, it's going to be negative. Do you guys understand that? Like if you just plug it into your calculator, like you don't have to understand, I don't understand all of the log and the natural log and all that kind of stuff. But you, you, you have natural log of a number less than one, it makes it negative. So then what happens is a negative times a negative makes it positive. You add that to your, so you're basically making, you're adding that to the E naught, which makes the E of the cell higher. So you can look at it from Le Chatelier's principle, or you can look, look at it from the Nernst equation. Okay. So that's if you precipitate in the anode. If you precipitate in the cathode, the opposite would happen. So looking at that equation again, we don't have to go back to the Nernst equation since you guys have seen that already. But if we go back, so now you precipitate in the cathode. So now there's Cu2 plus, right? You're precipitating out the Cu2 plus, And so it's on the reactant side. So it wants to keep positives in there. So you are, you're decreasing the amount of reactant. So it wants to shift back. It's going to resist moving forward. It's not going to send as many electrons over because sending electrons over pulls more two plus out of solution. It doesn't want to do that. So you could look at it from that perspective, or you could say the Nernst equation, natural log of a number that is now greater than one is positive. And so you, you have the E of the cell minus a positive number, it's gonna make the, the new E of, or E naught minus that positive number is now gonna make the E of the cell less than what it would be in standard conditions. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, So are there, um, if that answers that question, oh, because that was about the Nernst equation. So uh, if you feel comfortable utilizing the Nernst equation and you can explain the Nernst equation, then I encourage you to do so. If you do not, don't worry about it. Try to figure it out conceptually and you should be fine. Okay, could we just like stick to the U or the Q part of the Nernst equation because that's really the part that affects the rest, right? That's correct. Yeah, just so stick to the Q. If we just mention that, would that be enough? As long as you explain what happened, you know, okay. that the and and the fact that um, that if you subtract if, the whole thing, that if Q then is larger than one, it it's it's positive, and so the E of the cell minus a positive makes it makes the or the e naught minus a positive makes it the e of the cell lower that the natural log of a number less than one becomes negative so you would you would have to explain it that way okay um, will they tell us if a precipitate is going to form since we don't have to memorize the solubility rules right yes they okay. will or if you're not sure you can ask me but i'm but i'm pretty sure they will they will tell you Okay, because there are some worksheets where it was like, if this is added, what's going to happen? Right. Uh, and those are those are on the, yeah, that's the old form where you had to memorize solubility rules. Okay. So it'll say like, 
when this is added to precipitate forms, how does that affect the voltage? Right. Or something like that. Yeah. Okay. That would be true. Okay. So, other questions? Number 12? Yes, I would be happy to do number 12. Um, okay. Okay. Number 12 is kind of unusual in that it's giving you sort of an imaginary um, reaction with the G because we don't have that element. So what they've done is you know that you have G solid going to G2 plus, um, and that's one of the half reactions. The other half reaction they give to you so that you can solve it, the Cr3 plus plus three electrons goes to Cr solid. Okay, so refer to the information above her, oops, typo, to determine the standard half solid reduction potential for the G2 plus. Okay, so, um, what you have to do that's interesting I don't think that's possible is it oh no did I get my key wrong okay well let's just pretend like let's ignore the let's ignore the the answer for a second um you have these half reactions. If we know that the overall reaction is 1.93 and the E of this half reaction right here is negative 0.74 and it's the reduction half reaction, which means that the other one has to be oxidized, right? So it would normally, it would be written the other way normally if, if you're adding half reactions together. So you're writing as a reduction though. So this is what I would say. Let me open up the um, the bamboo paper for a second and uh, okay. We'll get a new paper. Oh, I have too many things open, I feel like. Let me close, let me just, I need to get some stuff out of the way. Um, okay. All right, so what we have is if we have the the two, the two reductions are Cr3 plus plus three electrons goes to Cr, and the other one is G2 plus plus two electrons goes to G solid. Okay, these are both reductions, and we know this one is negative 0.74 volts. We don't know this one. Now, I would say this, that... If the E naught, right, so I'm sorry, the E total, E naught of the cell is equal to E of the reduction at the cathode minus E naught of the reduction at the anode. Okay? And we know that this one is written in its reduction form, okay? Because that they gave it to us. They said this is this is reduction, and this is what it is. And we know that in the the balanced total reaction, it was in the re, in the reduction form. So that means that 1.93 volts is equal to negative 0.74 volts minus. We'll just you guys like to use X. I'll just use X. So then X, if we if we flip these equations, right, that's negative 
So basically, if I flip the x to the other side, x is equal to negative 0 0.74 volts minus negative 1.93 volts. So let's subtract it from both sides. So I'm using my calculator, handy dandy calculator. Um, Mr. Warren, I don't think that works. You don't think that works? Why not? Negative 0 0.74 minus 1.93. You wouldn't have two negatives. Oh, did I do that wrong? Wait, okay, let's say we did this. I, I, I can't believe I'm having problems with this math. So here's a negative. If we, we add, so let's, let's ignore this for a second. Whoop. All right. So we're going to add 0 0.74 volts to both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this becomes 2.67 is equal to negative x. And then I multiply both sides by negative 1. And then x is equal to, which is e of the reduction at the anode, is equal to negative 2.67 volts. Okay, so that's what I got. And when I look at the key, that is not even an answer. Answer it gives is negative 1.67. Uh, me and Nathan just assumed it was a typo and that one. I agree with you. That's interesting. Okay. Um, I know this comes as a shock. There is a mistake on my key. All right. So let me go back to the key. Mr. Warner, is this infallible? What is I know. That? Tell me about it. You know what? I, um, I am, uh, as I'm sure that you guys are, to a certain level of perfectionist, and so you hate it when you make mistakes. Like I just, I'm like, oh, and then, and then I had a couple of my AP Chem students went off to college and came back, and I'm like, so tell me about class. And then, because I'm totally self conscious, I'm like, do your teachers make any mistakes? I'm like, oh my gosh, at least once a class, the professor makes a mistake. I'm like, yes, I'm as good as a college professor because they make mistakes too. <laughs> so. It's still, it's still a bummer. I still don't want to make mistakes. It's, it's not justifying it, rationalizing it, but somehow it makes me feel better that other people make mistakes. So. <laughs> Who are way more educated than I am. Yeah. Say that again, what? Should I what? It goes, it's 0.19B. Oh, look at that. That's a special kind of, <laughs> there's not even no volts on this one, wow. I really botched that question. It was a typo. Yeah, that question was typed up horribly. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, I think C should be 2.7 because yeah. then it's more evil. It's more evil, yes. 2.7 <laughs> would be, I like that. I, I'm i pretty sure, I, I, I went over my test again today. I'm pretty sure there's none of those mistakes, but I will double check. Yeah, that'll be great. I, I, I'm sure that, and if I change something, I'm gonna have to change the whole thing. I'm gonna be like, oh, you, all four answers you're gonna have to change because if I change one of them, you guys are gonna know that's the right answer. I'll double check it. Anyways. You haven't found a mistake on the test yet, so you're probably good. Yeah. <laughs> this is like the first one on a practice test or a regular test. You can oh. pass, it's okay. Okay, oh, that's good, thank you. It's usually my grading that is 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 <laughs> erroneous. And it just teaches us to be responsible about checking our own grades. <laughs> yeah. It's a good skill. Yes, this is true. Okay, other questions. Thank mm -hmm. you.
I think I've given you guys a heads up on most of the stuff that's on the test. I would say that um, don't forget to include units on the answers where applicable. Remember your units. Think about what you're what you're being asked for, and then because a lot of times um, you're going to get like there's questions that actually ask you for the they give this answer and you you know and and they uh, they tell you what units you need to put it in. So you need to make sure you pay attention to that. Okay. You said this test was a quick test. Is it going to be like one of those really short ones where if you lose two points, you're suddenly out of 80%? Well, I hope not. I, I added more. Since I talked to you guys, I tried to add more in. There are 11 multiple choice. Um, there, so that's 11 points there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I put 21 points in the free response, which is more than usual. So that's a total of 32 points total. So now there's more points. Um, I would say that maybe um, a third of the free response is like you have to write sentences and justify. Um, there is probably a third of the free response that is running actual calculations like the E of the cell or finding delta G or doing both of those. Um, and then the other third of the free response is um, writing those half reactions. Writing the half reactions of, the, um, of whatever cell you're given. So, um, I mean, there's part of me that looks at it like, I'm like, okay, that one's going to be quick. Like one, two, three, that'll be quick. And then there'll be some that'll take you a little bit longer. I don't know. I, I made it longer on purpose so that there could be more points. So it wouldn't be the situation where like you lose one point and you know, that's 10% like of your grade or something. Um, I think the last few tests have been anywhere from 24 to 28 points total. So this is 31, so this is pretty high. Um, I still don't think it's going to take you the whole period, though, because I think some of the concepts are, like, if you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you might be able to piece it together. Um, but it's not like it's going to require, like, the multiple choice aren't, with the exception of that one where you have to write everything out and put it in, a, in one concise equation. With the exception of that, the multiple choice, there's not like a bunch of where you have to, you know, do complex calculations by hand. I can't believe this is your last big unit test. Oh my gosh. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. How many more things are going to go into the grade book after this? Well, um... I still have to grade your, this weekend I have to grade your lab notebooks, which the longer I wait, the less strict I'm going to grade them, I have to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> have you started grading them yet? No. Oh my gosh, no. Give everybody hundreds. Uh, it, yeah, it's fine. close. It's really close, like a participation grade. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the lab wasn't even that intense. Like, I don't know what I'm waiting for. Um, so... There's that lab, but that's going to be in the homework category. Your final exam, which is like, it's going to be worth two unit tests. But remember, you can really influence your grade positively with this. Most people influence their grade positively with the final exam. Um, say again? It's going to be like the last semester final, right? So where it'll replace your lowest grade. And yes. Yeah, there's, it's like it replaces your lowest grade. And if you get a four, the equivalent of a four or five, you get... The letter bump, like it's, 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 it make usually makes everybody happy. Like it's the band aid that fixes everybody's grades worries. Um, and uh, but after that, like there's a few things. Like I, I have accountability grades. I guess you could almost say for the final month. Like you can't just check out and say, okay, we're done with AP Chem. It's more like I need to keep doing some of the assignments. Um because they're for points, but your grade is pretty well established by the time you take the AP Chem, the actual AP Chem exam in May. Okay. 
So I would say there's really only, so there's this test and assignment sheet. There's the lab notebook and the big final. So I would say that your, your grade is determined by the next four assignments. Okay. For the fun fact of the AP Chem exam, can we just do random chem experience, like experiments without the lab, but just like yes, rainbow one again? We can the rainbow one. Yeah, I want to make purple. Oh, you want to make purple? <laughs> well, you know it's funny you say that because um, Sierra College had an art. I don't know if I told you guys that Sierra yeah, College. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay, so <clears throat> it might be fun to try theirs out and see how it, how you guys like it. The trash can full of ping pong balls again. <laughs> that one, that one, it, it scares me. I gotta be honest with you. It was fun, but it scares me. Um, we can try that one. We can try whatever. I, I'm pretty, I want us to do the, the electrochem lab, but it, we're, it, we're not going to write up stuff. I mean, we're going to make ice cream and we're going to, yes. you know, do that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to be a pretty quiet two weeks. I mean, we're the first test. And then after that, I know you guys have like five tests you need to work on and stuff. So clearly I am not going to be doing anything serious for two weeks after the AP Chem exam. Like, Thank you. We're, yeah, we're hanging out. We're, you know, looking at stuff. We're playing around. Whatever we do is only in class. You're not going to do any homework. Um, so that takes us through mid-May. So really there's like only two weeks left after that. So it's very laid back. Really excited. I know. That's good. <laughs> it's like a dream. Yeah, it's so funny. Like I used to stress about it a lot more, and and depending upon your the teacher, like there's some AP Chem teachers that they put a lot of emphasis on this last, like the last three or four weeks of school. They have units. They really they make the kids work. Um, there's other schools. Granted, they're they're they are private schools, but there's other schools where once the AP Chem exam is done, the kids do not have to come to school for class. Oh, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like if I fall somewhere in the middle, I'm good. You still have to come to class, and we, but we do something. It's just not worth as much. Yeah, it's like improving our real world knowledge of chemistry and how yeah. it actually works instead of just like theory. Yeah. Plus, yes. It's really fun. That would be good. You guys have worked very hard all year. You guys have put up with a bazillion homework assignments. Tests and retakes. You guys have earned it. Yay. <laughs> well, are there any other questions? I think I'm okay. Good? Me too. Okay. Thanks. Well, then, um, I mean, I'll be at school early if you guys need to come in. If something occurs to you you want to talk to me about. Otherwise... And I'll see you guys. Oh, and um, <laughs> funny. We're making waffles for the soccer team again. Yes, yes. And it, I know. Well, it depends on how much waffle mix he brings in. I'm not bringing my own waffle mix that you guys could have some. But, it, I mean, I don't want you guys to be, well, whatever. We'll try to have some waffles for you guys to have. Can you make that a test tradition? <laughs> well, I think it'll be hard to do on on the final exam we'll figure something out so yes so i so we so i just want to warn you guys about that we're gonna have a bunch of uh freshman girls in the room eating waffles so but it'll all work out though sounds good okay all right you guys well get some rest tonight please get some sleep yep all right and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Woo. All right. Night, night. All right, night, night. Bye. All right, good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.